Afternoon guys, so um, <clears throat> first walk for a while, uh, not much of a walk really, but uh, a few people have expressed interest in some of the, um, I did a recent video on the Castleton um, Garland Festival and some people said well, it's quite interesting the, these sorts of things that happen in Derbyshire. So what I'm doing today, Hope, which is just down the road from Castleton, is having their Wakes and Well Dressing Week, which runs from today right the way through to next weekend. So what I'll do, I'll explain a bit about what they are and then I'll go out on the walk and then probably come back a short cut across the fields. Um, and while I'm there, I might even pop into Hope Churchyard. There's a, an 8th century cross in there that could be quite interesting. So I'll explain them. For, so well dressings. So uh, well dressings, they reckon this sort of uh, goes right back to sort of pagan times when people obviously would carry out certain rituals and maybe even sacrifices to uh, you know, give thanks to the gods for providing water and probably also ensuring that the water was there for the following year. And like most pagan festivals, that was then adopted by the Christian church. And you know, it probably was at the one time just people putting flowers there. So that's quite common, quite broad spread. But what seemed to happen in Derbyshire, and it sort of started to get some importance in the sort of 17th century onwards, um, and then I think probably in Victorian times a specific way of doing it came to uh, fruition was that they would um, on a clay covered board using flowers pressed into the clay uh, it produce these well dressings that is unique to the Peak District there's some quite famous ones Tissington near Ashbourne uh, that's quite common they all have a, a religious theme because the idea is you're giving thanks to God for the water that's been provided through the well or spring so uh, we're going to head over there. So yeah, it's, it's been a resurgence lately. So uh, it sort of died a death a little bit in the 20th century, but towards the millennium and now it's sort of picked up again. So uh, we'll go and have a look at that, have a wander around. The village is all festooned in, uh, you know, garlands and things like that. So it should be quite interesting. I think there's about four to see. Um, so I've got those marked out and we'll have a little wander down there. Um, what wakes are, so again, it's all, it's all religious. It goes back to uh, the early days of Christianity in this country. Most churches had a saint's day. So uh, St. Edmund or St. Patrick. On that saint's day, you have a vigil where you pray. But sometimes if it was in a late hour, they were called wakes. Uh, and then that later developed into like a day of drinking and partying. And then in some areas, that started to become a sort of annual holiday, particularly in places like the Northwest. Uh, which where they had them for certain trades so they typically are a week or in some cases two weeks where everybody would stop work and then essentially celebrate and probably get very very drunk and whatever shenanigans go off <laughs> so all quite interesting perhaps we should do that more often uh, well then that sounds like my holidays so we're going to go and wander down there uh, i'll do a bit of videos put a few photos up and uh, see what's see what's happening down there so i'll catch up with you shortly when we're out on the walk <music> This is the uh, on the way to Hope and Castleton. I'm not doing much in Castleton, but this is the uh, memorial to a Wellington bomber crash in 1943. Um, it hit the bank over there near the river. Um, this is a maple tree that I think the family planted. Um, one of the pilots was uh, from Canada. So yeah, part of the video. I'll put a link up to it. Here's the first two at the college. Minecraft. <laughs> cool mate. I'll take a picture of that. My lad would love that. And here's the uh, next one. Train your brain. There used to be quite a religious theme to them but let's see. This is a college so it's educational. This is the first of four. I think the next one's at the church. So we'll head off over there now. 
but yeah cool you can see the clay here and all the flowers and petals pressed into it which took a lot of time and effort looks like the parade day is next saturday i have to come down for that good. yeah look the uh, roads closed between 7 pm and 9 30 so that's today, so tonight there must be something going on, I might come back down for that. Um, see, what's, see what's occurring. See all the houses here, we've got all this bunting up, they've had it up since um, King's Coronation. Probably takes you, saves your point back up again, doesn't it? So we're going to head down to the main part of the village now. So that's Mario, I think. <laughs> cool. Never played one in my life, not Nintendo anyway. There's a Pac-Man thing going off. Just saw one up there, a giant Pac-Man. So it seems to be like a computer game theme. So, so much for thanking God for the water. Or well, thank Nintendo and uh, PlayStation. Don't see many of it with independent garages like that now, do you? Well, there's an exhibition in the hall, in the church, sorry, we'll go and have a look at that, I think. It says Eccles Cross. I think that's one of these very early sort of 8th century crosses. You can tell by the square base. But again, as usual, I'll put some information up about that. But that's definitely one of them. This is the north side, and I think that's what that is. So, what happened in a lot of cases, um, especially during the Civil War and the Puritan times, they would uh, destroy these crosses uh, because they felt any idolisation, God, or it was like a a sin so probably what happened to this one because it just looks like a stump i'll have a wander around now anyway beautiful little churchyard uh, st peter's church 14th century some of the yew trees in it this is the uh, medieval 8th century cross i'll find out what that echoes cross was Got some really cool markings on that. Um, <clears throat> and this is an 18th century guidepost that was put in by the Historical Society. See that cement mark there? They found this in three pieces. It was hidden away, um, I think, during the Civil War, and then they found it and reconstructed it. Like I said previously, they, they weren't a big fan of idolization, or whatever it's called. Idolatry, I think that's the word. So they broke it into pieces, but fortunately, somebody had the wherewithal to hide it and then they reconstructed it. I'll take some pictures of that and then we'll head off and try and find where the uh, well dressing is. graveyard my missus would love it in here those old graves so i think it's 14th century i find out about history about it because i'm normally these were the sites of earlier churches as well so i'm gonna take some photographs then go on the hunt for the well dressing might be out this way i suspect second one with a bit of a more um, religious theme to it king solomon Apparently the reason they uh, did this in the 17th century and thought of doing this was they were quite relieved to have survived the plague in a lot of cases. Lovely big old yew tree there. We'll go and find number three and four which are off the Edel Road. It's the uh, War Memorial, the first and also the little plaque at the bottom of the Second World War. And you've got a lovely shot up there to Wen Hill. And then another one of these <laughs> Mario Brothers things. <coughs> I'm sure what the score is there. Some sort of theme. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, solve with Mario. Oh, looks a bit better than that. We're going to head off now. I think the next two at the uh, on the Edel Road, one at the school, one just up the road as you turn into it, and then that's the four well dressings. So 
don't know about little water around there. Um, I'll catch up when I get to the next one. Just come up to the next one. This is where I get all my meat from. Watson's Farm shop, mate. Cracking. Lose Hill lamb. Can't beat it. So, this one looks like another one with the old uh, theme of the uh, games. Zelda. I remember playing that years ago. That's the last one. Game over. <laughs> it's outside the primary school. Not sure what the sticks are about. Looks like a rush bearing thing. So, there you go. That's the well dressings this year. Oh, Tissington's also a very good one to go to. I think they're a bit more religious, but obviously, move of the times, don't you? So, uh, I'll put some history up. Like I say, it all goes back to sort of pagan times. Uh, you know, thanks and sacrifices for the water used to come from these wells. And then that got to buy the Christian church as was the way. Um, and then finally, yeah, during the sort of 17th century, they were so glad to sort of be rid of the plague that uh, that's when this tradition really started in Derbyshire. And it is unique to Derbyshire, this well dressing. Obviously, putting offerings on wells is quite uh, widespread, but it's only really Derbyshire that do the well dressings. And I think there are some rare ones they do in winter, they're normally in summer. So yeah, get along. I mean, like I say, Tissington's a good one. There's one in Eam. There's one here. A lot of major sort of villages have these. Um, I might see if there's still any on over next weekend or so to maybe go around a few. I know the Tissington one's finished. But unfortunately, I have my daughters and granddaughter over and I have to occupy them for the last two weeks. So, I shall crack on now. Bit of a walk back over the field, so I'll do a bit of filming there. You might see some wildlife or flora or fauna or something. I'm going to in a shop, get a few supplies and then uh, catch up with you later. shopping tea tonight and a few bits and bobs and then we're now heading down towards Pendale and we're gonna head off across the bottom of the valley back to Castleton. cross came from a few videos ago I tried to find one up there but it's not there that's why they moved it down to the churchyard that makes sense <coughs> that's quite an old one they suspect Roman maybe even um, prehistoric and then it's obviously used later on for a, a signpost and a way and all that sort of thing that makes complete sense now. And that explains why I couldn't find it, despite it being shown on the map. Yellow headed nettles. I don't know what they're called. I don't know what nettles anyway. Maybe they're not. They're just right next to the nettles. I'll take some pictures of those and look at what they are. All of his old styles with these uh, weights on. Quite a novel, aren't they? Well, not novel, but, you know, a bit of old ingenuity. So we're heading there now, following 
be like a lollipop out of my mouth. <laughs> Following the Peaks Hole Water now, joins the River No down here. Um, I hope. But we're going to follow that all the way back to Castleton now. It's a nice steady walk. Should be fairly dry today as well. And uh, yeah, pretty really interesting little walk. That Eccles Cross makes sense now. I was looking at it for friggin' ages. And then uh, the Historical Society moved it. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> anyway, people down there in the river bathing. It's a nice little walk this. There's quite a lot of little circular walks around Castleton. They're all signposted. I think you can get a booklet from the um what's the name? Visitor Centre. So you know nothing too taxing generally. So yeah, we're just gonna head up probably about a mile and a half, two miles back to Castleton now and then yeah. First time I've been out in a while, got to get some fresh air blowing for the old cob for, the, for everything and clearing out all the cobwebs and whatever because I've been eating and drinking a lot lately so uh, I'm going to put a bit of a post up later in the week but uh, I made some decisions about sorting my crap out I need to do it sooner rather than later I think um, managed to get to 55 without having taken any long term medication so those chances diminish by the day so it's all about risk mitigation now, <laughs> but have some rain later. I think there's a good book actually. Um, what is it called now? I'll find it and I'll put a link. Um, it's how to sort of when you're walking through places like this, observing what nature's actually telling you, whether that be weather, cloud formations, wildlife, and uh, you can normally tell when the weather's about to change. Normally, the wind changes, that's quite a a telling um, thing, sign to watch out for. Animals hunker down, things go quiet sometimes. But yeah, it's a really good book. Um, I'll dig that out and put a put a reference to it. I've read a couple of book, good books lately, actually. I think I put them up on YouTube as shorts, and TikTok, and whatever. One was about I'm reading at the moment is about trespass. So where all that came from, how all the rich buggers. Um, enclosed all the land, uh, etc. That's a really interesting read. Really. Put it into some sort of radical revolutionary. It's starting to fire, my, fire me up, I tell you that much. And then I just finished Bobby Stories. I was away in Aberdeen dropping my daughters off and uh, Blue's Hill in the background. And um, I sort of got a book for a couple of nights to read. I stayed in a hotel, didn't really fancy doing much else. So that's a really good book by John Burns, who's a mountaineer and quite famous in that world so stories of little bobbies he's been to and things that have gone off I've got the bobby bible somewhere that's a good book it lists them all certainly all the ones that uh, the mountain bobby association look after anyway so uh, that's never a good book what I might do actually is do a bit of a book review video I've got quite a lot of books I'll probably just get them all out go through them explain a bit about what they're about and then put the links in uh, a video might be useful for anybody who's uh, just getting into hiking or or even if you're not for that matter so yeah we're gonna head off down here now i've been magnum that's giving me a sugar rush <coughs> so just a nice pleasant walk back along peaks hole water which you can see down there which goes all the way back to the peak cavern in castleton over there's the old quarry <coughs> that's down there. i went up our I'll link to that video probably. Here's a, a tumbler on there. I went up to a few months back, did a walk around the back there, and uh, yeah, that very hill there, there's a tumulus burial mound on top. Some stunning views there up the Hope Valley. Well worth a look. The old cement works still there, been there since 1903. I think that's from about 1970s. Yeah, nice little walk this. That black lamb there. Oh, they've uh, redone this style, it's a bit cramped before, they've, it's like they've uh, repaired it. Just saw some trout in the, <coughs> the peaks all water on the way through there. Got some photos of stuff. But, uh, I bought this lens protector. This GoPro I haven't got in stock for whatever reason. 
it's shite. It's like uh, misting up inside for some reason. Doesn't look like it makes a waterproof seal either. So it's just a bit hazy. I do apologise. As soon as they come back in stock, I can get one. But yeah, look how clear that water is. So I've seen a few trout darting about in there. Here's a fly fishing club that have the rights on it. I might look into joining that maybe. So we'll head down, down there into the village and then uh, head off back to the house. That's a mill that I've mentioned in previous videos. Looks like some dark clouds brewing over Mantor there. A bit of rain forecast later. I'm building a brand new house here. Hello, Mr. Lamb. Hello. Hello. How are you? You're very tame. Cool old building that is, with all the jack doors on it. A lot of uh, meadows not been grazed here, which is good. Good for the bees and all that. So yeah, uh, head back down here onto the main road and then I'm just going to stop filming there because it's like Platpool Pleasure Beach. And then uh, I'll catch up with you when I get back home. This is the George, this is the garden where they grow all their stuff. All fresh produce. Mint, go to the George and try it all. Everything from wild garlic to fruits and chutneys and jams and pickles. Well worth going to. Well, that was quite a nice little walk, a bit of history in there. You know, the Hope Well dressings and uh, the churchyard and the medieval crosses. So, you know, it's a really good little walk that. Probably only took me a couple of hours to do that. It's probably about four, three or four miles tops. So, highly recommend that. And uh, also, they have these walks um, all documented on little pamphlets and the visitor centres. So that's well worth a good look. So, anyway, I'll leave you that with you now. Um, Next video is going to be, I'm going to Odin's Mine. I went there before and didn't even go in the mine. I went in a bloody cave by mistake. So I'm going to go and explore that one evening. So that'll be the next video that comes along. So keep an eye out for that. Um, stay safe out there. Get out and enjoy the outdoors. And I'll speak to you soon. Mm -hmm.